planar tracker is one of the most useful tools in the Fusion page of DaVinci Resolve. So today I've got two great examples of how you can use it. So welcome back to Creator Reality. I know that I've done a, well I've done at least one planar tracker video before, but we're gonna use it a little bit differently today and we're gonna combine it with some other nodes in the Fusion page. So I hope you enjoy, I hope you learn something. Let's dive into DaVinci Resolve and I'll show you what we're working with. I have a very appropriately named project and I've got two files here. I've got some motorcycle footage, me riding along down the road, and then I've got a clip of the side of my bike. Have you noticed a trend here? Everything's bike related. I have another channel and I do motorcycle stuff there and I use that to learn more fusion. If you're like that, leave me a comment below. I'd love to know that I'm not alone. I'm feeling pretty alone today. Anyway, let's go into the first thing that we're gonna do, and that is going to be the screen replacement on my dash. And I'm gonna show you a couple of neat tricks that you can apply even if you're not riding a motorcycle. So just roll with me, you're gonna learn something. I said roll with me, because <laughs> it's motorcycle. All right, so for this first one, we're gonna do a screen replacement of this infotainment screen, right? So the first thing we need to do is hold Alt and click on our video. That selects just the video. If I just click on it, now we have the video and audio selected, but Alt and click and just the video selected. Now I'm gonna hold Alt again. I have let go, now I'm gonna hold it again, and I'm gonna click and drag up. Creates a duplicate, nice and easy. Now we're gonna speed ramp it. We're gonna freeze frame it. Oh, look at this, we're learning stuff. So we're gonna right click, go up to change clip speed, and I'm gonna click freeze frame, and that's it. Now, I got lucky on this one because everything's pretty vertical. I have done this dozens of times in the last month and a half or two months, and every time it's like crooked, so whatever. Anyway, now I'm gonna select these two clips, and you can let it select the audio, that's fine. And then we're gonna right click, and select new fusion clip. Now it creates separate fusion clip and audio. They're no longer linked, but we're gonna come over here and click on our fusion icon, and it brings this up in fusion, and you can use your mouse wheel to scroll around and move around, but we need to get rid of background one, so I'm gonna click on it, and I'm gonna hold control and click on merge one, merge two, and press backspace. If I'm going too fast for you, just back up the video, play it again. Anyway, all hopped up on coffee today. I'm gonna to move things around, and then I'm gonna drag from the output of media in one to media out one. And you'll see that my motorcycle, motorcycle footage shows up in our right-hand viewer. This is our left-hand viewer. If you don't see it, click over here. Look at that, one viewer, two viewers. So media in one, we know is our base footage. If I click on media in two and press the one key, it comes up in the left-hand viewer. But let's press the one key again. Let's not confuse ourselves. With media in one selected, press shift space bar and type in planner. There it is, planner tracker, boom. We have our tracker, we're gonna move it over for later, you'll see why in a minute. But the first thing we need to do is set our keyframe. So we press set, I know, it, it's reference time 0, 0.0. We are on the first frame of this clip. If you're over here and you click set, it'll set the frame to uh, the reference time to 259, but we want it set to zero. So we'll drag all the way to the beginning, click set, it's zero. Then we're gonna change the tracker from point to hybrid point area. And then I'm gonna really carefully, as you're watching, click around here like so, and then, yeah, we've got a box. Look, control mouse wheel to zoom in, we can refine this. We don't wanna pick up anything else that's moving, so we just want this screen, right? So we're gonna move our, our little corners around, and you can get fancy with this, but we don't need to, we'll get fancy later. With just the screen selected, I'm gonna come back up here and select fit, and then we're gonna click track forward. We're at the beginning of our clip, so we're gonna, we're gonna click track forward. If you're somewhere else, you can click back, forward, and then you can also click go. So if you were set in the middle here, you would wanna track forward, click go, track backward. We're at the start, we're just gonna track forward. There it goes, and my fancy computer tracks it very quickly, and away we go, all 18 seconds of it done before I can finish this sentence, right? I'm watching it on OBS. It, it's done now. It's tracked. We wanna scroll through and make sure that it did a good job tracking, and it did. Yes, it did a great job. And if you've been wondering for the last four minutes or so, 
Will this work in DaVinci Resolve 19? It will. I've been doing it in 19 and 20, but I'm using 20 for everything now because I think it's awesome. So now we're going to move media into over a little bit, make room for things, and press one, and it comes up in our left-hand viewer, and it's freeze-framed, so we just need the one frame from it, right? We're doing this screen replacement with a static screen, but it's a great excuse to look at some transform nodes, which we'll get into post-haste. First thing we need to do is grab the curve polygon here and drag it in, connect the output of it to the blue input on media in two. Nothing shows up over here, so we can come turn off the polygon one. Now it's there. It's just the way it works. But I'm gonna control mouse wheel to zoom in and I'm gonna click on just the area I want, okay? And now I'm creating, and this is kind of important, so we wanna get this lined up pretty well. That's pretty good right there. We're gonna move this over, in fact, just a little bit. Great, now we have that cut out. We can turn polygon one back on and you'll see it's right here. Very important, come up here and choose fit because this is gonna get wonky in a minute. With media in two selected, shift space bar, type in trans, you get transform, XF, click add, that's great. We're gonna start by double clicking on size, type in three, press tab, and nothing happened because Media in two is in our left viewer. So with transform one selected, we're gonna press one. Now you see why we only zoomed into three, right? So I'm gonna drag my Y up and my X over, and then I'm gonna come in here, double click on size again, type in five. I find that five gets it big enough and doesn't zoom in too far that this little screen looks blurry to the viewer. It looks pretty good. I've actually had people comment on it like, really, you were riding 35 down the highway? Not really, I used the stuff I learned in this video. If you're learning anything in this video, put the like button, maybe consider subscribing at the end, I don't know. Anyway, not wasting time. We're gonna drag this up and over again. And here is where some of the magic has to happen because with this transform node, you're not going to get the rectangle that we need. You could play around later and do some of the things that we're gonna do and fix it, but it doesn't work as well. This makes it so much easier. So with transform one selected, we're gonna press shift spacebar again, type in trans, and we're gonna grab this one that doesn't have an acronym after it. And you have to click it twice. And I did a video on this node before, so I'm gonna breeze through it, but I'm gonna add it in. And I'm gonna press one, so it's in my left-hand viewer. And I'm gonna come up to control mode and I'm gonna select interactive canvas. The grids pop up. Now, we're gonna use this checkerboard pattern on the background, and we wanna get this corner to line up. So we're gonna click in this quadrant here, or space, and drag it over. And what you'll notice is that when you drag any one of these nine grid squares, everything else moves. So you kinda of end up having to play with it a little bit, and tweak it, and get happy with it, and there we go. That's pretty square. A man on a galloping horse will never know the difference, which is what my dad told me when I wanted to upgrade parts of my car. He's like, nobody's gonna care. Anyway, side story aside, now we can drag this into the green input of Planar Tracker 1. This is the output of Transform 2. If you wanna get fancy, lasso select all four, move them over, everything looks square again. Now with Planar Tracker 1 selected, we wanna come up to Operation Mode, change it from Track to Corner Pin. I love Corner Pin. If you're using a planner tracker, you're doing corner pins. Unless you're doing the thing in the next chapter, in which case, just stick around a minute. You might learn something anyway. So with everything set the way it is, we're on fit. We got to get this close, right? So we're just going to drag it down here. And you notice you can't see anything, right? You can't see anything? We're going to come over to settings of planner tracker one. And we're just going to drag our blend down to about 0.65 or so. Oh, I got it close this time. And then here comes the tedious bit, and I'm gonna fast forward this, but the idea is to go from corner to corner until the screen that you grabbed matches the screen that you are replacing. Now it's close. We're gonna control mouse wheel to zoom in and we can get it even finer. So we'll again, speed this up. There, whew, that only took me three go arounds, I think. Anyway, if you were paying attention, you could zoom in further and get it really dialed in, or you can just get it pretty close. In this case, it's going on YouTube, so their compression is gonna obliterate it anyway, so close is good enough. Now, we wanna come back up to fit with Planar Tracker 1 still selected, settings, we'll drag our blend all the way back to one, 
And if you drag this around, actually, if I control mouse wheel and zoom in and drag the blend mode, I mean, you can see that it, it wobbled just a little bit, but it got pretty darn close. And you could go in, this is just a tutorial that I'm doing, but you could go in and really fine tune this to where it's spot on. But anyway, blend is one, we're done. Come back to the edit page, let it do the render cache, go full screen and hit play. And look, now we're doing 37 miles an hour down the road the entire time. And if you really wanna get fancy, what you could do is use a magic mask node outside of this and blend it back in. Pretty easy stuff. I did a video on magic mask over here. You can use it in the fusion page and you're done. Hey, look, so is this. All right, let's move on to the second one. This one might actually be more interesting to some people because we do a lot of stabilization. I did a whole video on stabilization. I moved my camera and now I'm pointing wrong. Anyway, I have a video up there for stabilization in DaVinci Resolve, but we're gonna do it in the Fusion page. This is exciting. I actually did this in a video and I wanted to show how to do it. So now I'm showing you how to do it. Anyway, let's all mouse wheel zoom in. And first thing we need to do is right click, new Fusion clip. And then we're gonna click on our Fusion icon. And here we are, we're in our clip. We're on the first frame. This is sort of important. With media in one selected, shift space bar, and we want a planar tracker. So we get a planar tracker in there. We're gonna change our tracker to hybrid point area. And I'm gonna click on the plane that I wanna focus on. So if you don't have a motorcycle handy, you wanna focus on something else. You can really just tinker with this one. Pick a subject and track it. It's pretty much that easy and that simple. But anyway, I drew kind of a weird looking box on there. It's the Loch Ness Monster. That's what I'm going with. Don't go there. And then we have, we have to click our set button, of course, and then we're gonna track through it. And you'll see all the high contrast points are getting tracked all the way through. Boom, drag it back to the first frame and we're good, right? Well, what we need to do for this effect and to show that the stabilization is happening is I wanna draw a line on this uh, on this motorcycle. So I'm gonna come grab a polygon and a background, connect them, come into background, click on the color. I want it bright green. And then I'm gonna connect background one, I'm gonna merge it in. So I drag from the output of background one to the output of planar tracker one, which creates merge one. And then with polygon one selected, I can draw a line, I can click here, click there and click there. And we're still on the first frame and I can drag these points around to be exactly where I want them, but I've got my three points. Now with polygon one still selected, I can come up here to border width, bring it up a little bit, bring up the soft edge a little bit. And now we've got our line. And if you play through it, it moves around. Why would it do such a thing? Well, with Planner Tracker 1 selected, we come up to Operation Mode, we change it from Track to Steady. There we go, we're, we're steadied, right? And then if we scroll through the footage, you'll see that everything pretty much stays where it should. It gets a little off kilter, but it's doing the best it can. And we have all this checkerboard. Don't worry about that. If you really just wanted this clip steady, you could now add a Transform node and zoom in and it would hide that checkerboard and thus keep you know, keep the transparency from showing up in frame. But that's not what we wanna do, cause I wanna show you something really awesome with the planner tracker, so stick with me. The other thing is, by the end of the clip, this line has moved. So I can click on polygon one, and I can move the endpoints here to where they line up. And then I'll click on this one up here and move it. And then right in the middle, we kind of scroll back and make sure that it stays on the handlebars and that end point on the front fork, that looks pretty good. Again, it's a tutorial. We're not gonna get super precise, but you could spend time doing that. And now everything's kind of wonky, right? We, we, don't, we don't want this transparency, but our polygon stays where it's supposed to. So what do we do? We click on Planner Tracker 1, we press Control C to copy, click in empty space so nothing's selected, press Control V to paste, and then hold Shift and drag our planar tracker up until you see the yellow and blue line, let go. Now it's in line. And then all we have to do is invert steady transform. Boop, done. Now if I scroll through my footage, look at that. The polygon line moves 
with everything else. And if you're asking why did the Polygon line animate itself, it's because by default, over here in the inspector, Polygon 1, right here, right click here for shape animation, it created keyframes. So we have a keyframe here, and there's automatically a keyframe at the zeroth frame. Who knew? I knew. Now you know. But there we go. If we come back to the edit page and let this render out, here we can see full screen, our line is in effect. Look at that, and it stays right where it's supposed to be, but the camera's moving around and everything else isn't. How cool is that? Let's go add a little bit of secret sauce to this line, because in the original footage, I said, hey, editing John, draw a line on here. So I'm gonna click my fusion icon, and on polygon one, you're gonna learn a little bit about polygons right now. We wanna start at about the 10th frame, so I'm gonna come into the 10th frame. I clicked on it, you see the 10 there. And position and length is zero and one. So I'm gonna to click to create keyframes here. I'm gonna drag my length down to zero. And then right about the 115th frame. Yeah, there we go. We will drag length all the way to one. And then about 10 frames before the end, we can create a keyframe on position. And then we can drag to the end and drag our position up. So now when we go back to the edit page and we let this render out, you'll see that at the start of the clip, we have a green dot and then it draws the line that goes with the piece of the bike and stays on there and at the end, shoop, it's gone. Just like this video, it's over now. Did you learn anything? Did you enjoy it? Leave me a comment below. Let me know how you're doing out there. You having a good day, a bad day? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. And I will see you in the next video, which could be this one if you click on it. It's one of mine. You'll learn something. John out. Oh, and thanks for watching. Now, John out. <laughs>